Travis and Kelly, I'd like me to welcome everyone who has traveled near and far to be part of this celebration. They have asked me to thank each and every one of you for your love, your devotion, and your support. A special thanks to their parents for loving them and supporting them and helping them to become who they are today. Also, to their wedding party, they wanted me to point out that you are not just here as a tradition. But you're not just here because this is a chance to party, to celebrate a wedding, even though it is. You're all here as a living spirit to witness forever the miraculous union that is taking place today. And you're adding your agreement to this union before God. Now, friends and family, you are about to witness the power of God as He unites Father, we are so grateful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We are so humbled to be standing here at this beautiful sight and this place as we gather in your presence to witness the miracle of your love and the power of your Holy Spirit working to unite the lives of Travis and Kelly. Lord, I ask you to take over this ceremony and do a work in their hearts that would last forever. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with this day and blessing this couple. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In the ceremonies that I do, I often ask the wedding party to write down some neat little, I, I call them a love letter, a note uh, that kind of expresses their heart. And uh, so Travis and Kelly have done that, and I, I want to read those to you to, to give you a look at them. Kelly says this about Travis. Before Travis, I didn't know dreams came true. The Lord answered all of my prayers. He has given me more than I wanted and even things that I didn't know I needed. Every day I still wake up in awe, feeling the luckiest girl in the world. Travis has a love for life and for adventure. Unlike anyone you will ever meet, he doesn't know how to do anything half-heartedly. Everything he does, he gives it his all. That includes the way he loves me. Travis loves me in a way that I don't deserve. Isn't that such a reflection of the Lord's love for me? I know I can trust Travis because I know that I can trust his passionate heart for the Lord. He brings things out of me that I never knew existed. He secures my insecurities. 
helps and strengthen my weaknesses. He brings such joy and excitement for life, his love for God and heart for people in everything he does. And I am so excited when I think of building a life with Travis and what an honor it is that I get to be his wife and marry my very best friend. I'm so incredibly thankful and can hardly wait to serve God beside him all the days of my life. Super sweet. <laughs> And these are some of the sweet things that Travis had to say about his bride, Kelly. The hopes and dreams that I had as a young man before my wife-to-be has now become a reality in Kelly Nicole. She has exceeded the standard of a woman that I always wanted with her beauty and her gentleness and love. One of her greatest qualities is her compassion. Consistently more concerned for others' needs and feelings above her own. Her unwavering belief and support in my life has been such a blessing through our friendship and engagement. I know that I, having her for the rest of my life, is such a gift that I hope to treasure her with love, respect, and thankfulness always. The way in which God laid our past together is unparalleled. It gives me the confidence and the belief that it can only be orchestrated by God. Kelly is my very best friend. She laughs with me in times of joy. She cries with me in times of pain and loves me in all situations. Made just for me. Those are some incredibly sweet words. And those words are just part of what has brought them together. Now I want to share with you guys what I know what and who will actually keep them together. No. There's a word in the scriptures that has almost gone out of style. This word is the word covenant. There was a time when the word was a complete essence of a Christian's life. His theology, really. Modern times have allowed us to slip away from such a word and to use things like arrangements, contracts, agreements. And all these different words uh, can be broken in our day-to-day -day lives. It was never the plan of our Savior for us to enter into a marriage without using the word covenant. Nothing describes the word covenant better than the unconditional love of our Heavenly Father. And in Hebrews 13, Jesus says, and really makes a promise to all of us, that I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is a perfect picture of a covenant. The marriage covenant is very similar. It's defined by the scriptures as a solemn and a binding oath. In this covenant, there is a spiritual death, so to speak, where two individual lives die to self and become alive as one. This outcoming of this knitting together is that they always think of the others first. They always think of the others' wants, their needs, their desires and feelings before their own. This is the exact replica of what Jesus did before he gave his life on the cross. In John 15, it says, There is no greater love than those who would lay down their lives for another. And that's what's happening tonight. This is what's happening between Travis and Kelly. With their vows of love to each other in the presence of God, they are entering into a marriage covenant for life. Travis and Kelly are entering into their covenant. They would like to have the wedding party come and gather around them and lay hands on them and pray. After they pray, Travis is going to lead his bride in partaking of the Lord's Supper as his first act of serving his family. And they will give honor to the Lord Jesus in remembrance of the price that he paid on the cross for all of us and the covenant that he made for all that those who believe in him.
to guide them throughout this earth and through all they're doing and all their Kelly, today I become your husband and you become my wife. Today I become your husband and you become my wife. I promise to keep Jesus at the center of our marriage. promises I have made to you. A wedding ring is a very precious thing. It's an outward expression of uh, your faith and love. It's a never-ending circle 
that represents the continuing love of God, a love that never fails. It's God's never-ending love and your faith in Him that causes the power of His love to move in your life. And I want you to wear these rings as a continual reminder and the commitment that you have made to each other and to God today. So Travis, take this ring, place it on Kelly's finger, and say to her, Before Kelly puts this ring on your finger, I'm going to charge you with a memory that I pray that you will never forget. This woman stands by your side. And you have the responsibility of being the spiritual leader of this marriage and of your home. You are now accountable to God for one of his most precious gifts, Kelly. And I want you to wear this ring and remember that she is the love of your life and your helpmate in life forever. I want you to look at this ring always and let this ring be a reminder of your faith in God and your love for Kelly forever. Put it on his finger. Say, with this ring, I be wed. Father Barry is coming forward to share with us, and then he's going to speak a blessing over his new daughter or his daughter and his new son. <laughs> Kelly and Travis have chosen to get married under a hupa. A hupa is a traditional Jewish symbol used in a wedding, and it represents a home with a cloth roof in the four corners. The hoopah is open on all four sides to remember that the tent of Abraham was open for hospitality and every home of faith should be a hospitable home. This home is empty to show that a home is the, made up of the people in it, not the possessions that are brought into it. In a spiritual sense, the covering of a hoopah also represents the presence of God over the covenant of marriage. It's also a reminder that the call of God to his people as he spoke it to Abraham was to come into tabernacle with him, abide with him in a tent. We often translate that to just abide in his presence. The hoop is to be a reminder that the creator of all looks on marriage as something holy that he calls good. It also suggests that it's a witness to all of the others that the home that you're establishing is a hospitable home where the presence of God and his children are always welcome. Today the groom entered the hoopah first to represent his ownership on behalf of the couple. And when the bride entered the hoopah, it is symbolic of the groom providing her with shelter, clothing, and publicly demonstrating his responsibility to protect, honor, and provide for her. In a Hebraic wedding, there are actually seven different blessings spoken. Uh, we'll actually only speak two of them over you today. <laughs> Sameach te sameach reim ha'avim kasamecha Yezis racha began eden mikadim Baruch ata Adonai mesameach chatan vechala Grant perfect joy to these loving companions, Lord, as you did your creation in the Garden of Eden. Blessed are you, Lord, who brings the joy to the bride and the groom. And the final blessing I'll just do in English. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who created joy and gladness, the bride and the groom, mirth and song, delight and rejoicing, 
love and harmony, peace and companionship. Lord, there will be heard in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem voices of joy and gladness, the voices of the groom and the bride, the jubilant voices of those joined in marriage under the bridal canopy, the voices of young people feasting and singing. Blessed are you, Lord, who causes the groom to rejoice with his bride. And in closing, the blessing of Aaron. Yivarecha cha Adonai veishmarecha. Yair Adonai panavalecha veuchunecha. Yisa Adonai panavalecha veasim lacha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You made it. As followers of Jesus Christ before God Almighty in the name of Jesus, I now pronounce you one together. You are now husband and wife, and you may kiss your beautiful bride. <laughs> Kelly and Travis, stop. <laughs> Turn around and look at everybody gathered here. <laughs> These faces represent the body of Christ to you. These are people who love you and will always be there for you. Look at your family here on the front row. You come from them, but the blessings of the Lord will take you far beyond any of their accomplishments. And yet they've always got your back. Nothing can happen that will surprise them. Look up at the sky. Always look up and remember your creator. Look down at the ground. Remember to stay humble before your Lord. And as you listen to the voice of the Lord, these blessings will overtake you. You will be blessed in the city, you will be blessed in the field. The fruit of your labor, the fruit of your grounds, the fruit of your body will be blessed. You will be blessed in your shopping and you will be blessed in your investments. You will be blessed when you come in, you will be blessed when you go out. The Lord will cause any enemies to flee seven ways. And the Lord will set you apart as a holy family to draw all people unto him. The nations of the earth will see your family and they will call the name of the Lord holy for what he does through you. The Lord will prosper you and bless you as you listen to his voice. He will lead you and lend you to many nations. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And as you turn around and walk out, remember to listen to his voice.